thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Senator Colbeck for attending today for our launch of some really important resources. Um, the Older Persons Advocacy Network is a network of nine member organisations who are in each state and territory and two in the Northern Territory. We provide aged care advocacy services, that's individual advocacy support, information and education. And we are out there supporting older people um, every day. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the lands that we're meeting on today. Uh, today we are meeting on the... The Wurundjeri lands, and I'd like to acknowledge the elders of this nation, past, present, and emerging, and recognise that we are meeting on their land today. And we thank them for uh, having us here today. I'd also like to acknowledge Ross House and Ross House Association, whose building this is. And the reason we're having this event here today is because these are the sorts of community organisations that the Older Person Ad Advocacy Network wants to connect with and wants to get these tools in the hands of these volunteers and community advocates. It's only this way as we build an ecosystem to support older people that will be able to stamp out elder abuse and prevent neglect. So I'd also like to acknowledge um, our guest hosts and fellow advocates being HAG, the Housing for the Age Action Group, and uh, they are residents of this building. And um, thank you for having us here today as a partner in this. <laughs> so before we get underway and the Minister launches uh, these really valuable tools, I'd like to invite Maria Berry up to the floor to um, tell us a little bit about her experience and the importance of uh, Getting good support, I suppose, Maria. Maria is one of our community advocates who has been um, tirelessly, I would say, championing the cause of elder abuse prevention. Maria and I met at the Fifth Elder Abuse Conference as she told her story, and I'd like to welcome Maria now. Thanks very much, Craig. I'd just like to thank everyone that's uh, made the time to come here today. It's fantastic and we do apologise for the time difference, but it's been a great networking opportunity. So, what support do families need who are experiencing abuse? If I can reflect on my own story, today I'm really, really excited about the Elder Help app and about the film that's coming Notice, noticing something. When I was going through the journey with my father, I would have loved to have had the app and I would have loved to have had more community awareness to have that support whilst we were going through our journey. And at the time, although I've got three decades experience of working with older people in residential care facilities and in the communities, I had a hell of a time trying to seek help, support and navigate the system. And all I really wanted was just some help. And I recall my father, he had dementia, but I remember him looking at me saying, oh, sis, he said, is anyone going to listen to us? So I guess my message is when you're going through something that's crisis, it's traumatic, you're looking for those simple things. So that's why I believe in the Elder Help app and noticing something as really key points and starters that all of us can take back to our communities. It's those simple things that help and matter. Now, over the last 10 weeks, Marie Montgomery and myself have been touring around Australia, delivering the understanding of the Charter of Aged Care Rights. This is, this is something, it might be basic, but some of the messages that we've had back through those 10 weeks are all on this app, are all what people are asking us about the issues, about where they seek help, what, the, what do they do with, um, if they're faced with elder abuse, and not realising that, yes, we do have rights, and I guess, why do we need a piece of paper with the Charter of Aged Care Rights? We need it because we've got a Royal Commission happening at the moment. We all need reminding of the basic rights. So, excuse me. <laughs> Advocacy, uh, I wish that I'd had advocacy with my father and my father would have loved some advocacy. Aged care support, where, where we could go. My father, I thought, was going to become homeless. We were at Brinks Point 
Accessing services, now that was massive too in a rural area. I go and Google and you get different information from different people. And a reminder of the rights, I can't stress enough how important that is. So, if you see something out in your community, say something. For the last 10 years, I have been heavily involved in my community and worked really hard, and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to have linked in with Craig at the Elder Abuse Conference, because that opened up the door. My dream was always, how can a girl at grassroots level connect with these organisations and people like yourselves here today and work together to create change? So I know that my father will be looking down today going, Go, sis. Go, sis. You've d we're doing it. We're doing it. We're doing it for every older Australian. But one thing I've learned over the 10 years, uh, partnerships are so important. With, with, with the new app, with noticing something, we have to be innovative. We have to find ways on how we in our communities can get those messages across to people. It's just crucial. I can think of quite a few examples of, there's many organisations out there that are doing fantastic work. Um, I'd like to th acknowledge not just one group, but Gathering of Kindness, um, the work they're doing at the moment. Next year, we're hoping to really rock the aged care services world with a reminder of kindness, and we'd like to link in with everybody here as well. And, um, and also, up in my rural area, I spend a lot of time voicing and, but we're finally, I feel like we're finally gaining some momentum. Some of the organisations up there are going to come together, but we need, we need you guys to do it together. And I heard a beautiful saying before, which I'm going to steal. Um, if you could describe me, I'm a wombat. I just keep going. So thank you very much for today and your time. Thank you, Maria. 2,375. I'm just going to let that number sit with you for the moment. 2,375. That's the number that old of people that came to OPAN last year who were victims of abuse. 2,375 lives that were impacted by physical, emotional, sexual abuse, and they came to us not knowing where to go and not knowing what to do. 2,375 Australians who mainly didn't want retribution, they just wanted the abuse to stop. People like Kerry, who's uh, watching down on us today, that Maria's told us about. There are also people like Joan, who had come to rely on her daughter for care and support. Joan, who was also on an aged care package and had raised concerns about what was going on with the aged care staff. When Joan's daughter tried to take her house, making her sign it over to her, and then got an AVO on her to try and get her out of the house. Joan didn't know what to do, neither did the aged care um, staff. Joan's story is a bit of an amalgam of some of the stories we get from um, our aged care advocates and our elder abuse prevention staff who are out there doing this and supporting people every day. It's quite typical of the support, though, and quite typical of their experience. In delivering 450 education sessions on the prevention of abuse of older people, OPAN members are leading the way in educating older people and supporting the community to stamp out this scourge of Australian society. As well as working to prevent the abuse of older people, OPAN delivers the National Aged Care Advocacy Program through its nine members, and we're very grateful for the funding from the Department of Health um, and from government to allow us to do that important work. Aged care advocates are vital in this time of residential aged care reform, um, growing demand for home care, and when the light is being shined on neglect through the Aged Care Royal Commission. 13,794 people connected with our aged care advocates last year. These are aged care advocates who stood behind them to provide information so they could, people could advocate for themselves. They stood beside them so they could feel safe and could feel confident in raising their voice. And they stood in front of them to act on their behalf 
and at their direction, because some of them were the, some of those 58% of people who were just too concerned or too scared about what, how it's going to impact their care or that they might get a reprisal for them to be able to raise their voice. Maria talked about the Charter of Aged Care Rights. This new Charter of Aged Care Rights is so important, it's something that OPAN has been championing over the last nine months. Through its community events and webinars, we've reached over 5,000 people across 24 community events. Unfortunately, we believe that the 2,375 older people we supported last year may be just the tip of the iceberg. Just one of those older people experiencing abuse is one too many. The Charter of Aged Care Rights says everyone deserves the right to live free of neglect and abuse. And despite 67% more older people getting aged care advocacy from uh, this year than in 2017, 14,000 older Australians accessing aged care advocacy is but 1.5% of people receiving aged care. So more needs to be done in raising awareness of aged care advocacy and more resources for aged care advocacy are also required. But OPAN has also been looking at different ways of connecting older people and their families and ways to increase awareness of our aged care abuse supports and ways to use our network and the network of people that are out there in the community, what I call the aged care ecosystem, to be the conduit to OPAN and to our member services. So today we learned, launched some new tools in the battle to prevent the abuse of older people. Uh, the Elder Help app and the Notice Something video will support volunteers, aged care community visitors, aged care staff, older people and their families, and really to raise the question, could it be the abuse of an older person or could my aged care rights be being infringed? We want people, as Maria said, if they say so see something, we want them to say something. If people want to talk to an aged care advocate and get advice, they can easily get that through OPAN and through the app. If they see abuse, they can easily get through the app and get to 1800 Elder Help, the new National Elder Abuse Helpline. Every Australian has the right to live free of abuse and neglect. In working with those who are in daily contact with older people and providing accessible information, OPAN believes this will provide another way that people can connect to their rights. In working with EAAA through the Compass Elder Abuse Knowledge Hub and the aged care sector, we'll be partnering to get these tools into the hands of the people that need them most. I also want to acknowledge the work of the Commonwealth Attorney General's Department and the cross-government agencies working on implementing the National Elder Abuse Plan. I'd also like to thank Senator Colbeck for being here today and I welcome him to the lectern uh, and to thank you for launching these resources for us today. Senator Colbeck. Thanks, Craig, um, and thanks for the invitation to be here uh, and everyone, thanks for your forbearance. It's been um, a busy day today, uh, but this is a really important part of it. As Craig has said, uh, we sit in a really important time right now with uh, in the middle of a Royal Commission into uh, the aged care sector. A really important time. And so the resources that support all of that, um, the processes that ensure that older Australians, senior Australians have access to high quality aged care is really important. And this morning I spent um, some time with the uh, advisory committee to the Quality and Safety Commissioner talking about what processes they might need with uh, the completion of their formation off the back of some legislation which passed the Parliament last week uh, to ensure they have the right tools to make sure that older Australians re receive the care that they deserve, um, whether it be in residential care or in home care for that matter. Some, so some really important work that's being done uh, right now. Uh, and so uh, the story we've just heard about personal experience is part of what's been coming through in the Royal Commission and it's, it's actually some of the most powerful things that we hear. Uh, and the Royal Commission has done that. I said the week before the Royal Commission brought down its interim report that we were all going to be put on notice. I probably didn't realise 
the power of that that was going to come in the report uh, just a week later. Uh, but it really has shone a focus on this whole sector and the importance of the services that are provided, uh, the importance that they are of quality, but of course all of the frameworks, the oversight and the systems that ensure that they are provided in a way that we all might expect. It also uh, made some very specific points about the community's attitudes towards older people more generally. Uh, and one of the more concerning, I suppose, points that came up in the, re in the report was that 50% of the people in residential aged care receive no visitors. And so it talked about our, our attitudes as a society towards our senior Australians. Uh, and it also, from that perspective, then reflects onto the topic that we're talking about today which is that of elder abuse, and what are the tools that are available to us all to recognise what might be occurring, but then to take some action. Uh, to have the courage to take some action, and I recognise the work that OPAN does in supporting people who are going through that process. It's really important. One of the things that we talked about this morning was making sure that our regulatory system empowered people to be able to make complaint in a way that they felt safe, but then be confident that that concern that they've expressed might be actioned in an appropriate way. And again, the things that OPAN are looking to do in the support they provide to people, uh, to older Australians. And it's really important work, really important work. And it's um, appropriate that uh, Craig acknowledges the work of the Attorney General, who I know uh, is, is really concerned uh, that we take effective action uh, but particularly while we have a national spotlight, Sean, on uh, the, the circumstances of senior Australians through the Royal Commission, that we ought to use that to, to make sure that all of the tools that are in place, uh, that can be in place, are in place, to assist us to make sure that people um, can get the advocacy that they want when they need it, but also that they're, they're encouraged and empowered to take action to ensure that they're looked after appropriately. Can I congratulate um, OPAN on the initiative of putting the film together? See action, take action. I think it's, it's a really simple but strong message. Um, hopefully it permeates the community broadly so, and encourages people to actually do that. But also the development of the app. Um, it puts at people's fingertips a really simple, valuable, available tool. And we all know the power of what sits in our hands with, a, with our smartphones these days. Everybody has one. Uh, the capacity to have that information available to you uh, at your fingertips, to be able to find the pathway, and um, I'm happy to acknowledge that aged care and the systems around it are quite complex. Navigating your way through can be daunting, even for people who actually understand the system. And I've had a few experiences of conversations around that. We have to try and make sure that we set things up to make, make it easier to do that. And tools such as this, that are interactive, that are instinctive, can actually assist with that. Uh, and make the connections that are important and, and assist people to uh, have the tools that they want when they need them to take the action that's appropriate. So I'm really delighted that the resources provided to OPAN have been able to assist with that. I hear the message from Craig. I'd be almost disappointed if he didn't make the <laughs> comment, to be frank. But again, we're, we're in a time when there's a spotlight on this sector. And you should take advantage of that opportunity. There will be major change in the delivery of services to senior Australians over the next few years. Um, that will happen off the back of the Royal Commission. We've already started that process. We made a commitment that we would continue to do the things that we'd started. Um, uh, the new quality standards, the things that you've talked about today, the code of conduct, um, and the Charter of Rights, all really important things for people to understand, really important things to, for people to understand. And 
What I would like to see off the back of this process is a system that delivers the care in the way that people want it when they need it and that's appropriate. But it also provides it in, in a, a way that's safe for them uh, and a system that is sympathetic to them and their needs regardless of the circumstances that crop up. And all of these tools that can flow into that uh, are really important. So congratulations on the initiative of bringing these two tools uh, to the community. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to be here today to be a part of the actual launch. So uh, thanks very much and congratulations. On that, we'd like now to show you the Notice Something video. Thank you, Travis. As we get older, we may need to rely on the support and help of others, like friends, family, carers, or those who provide services. Unfortunately, in some circumstances, this can lead to situations where we could be vulnerable to abuse. Sometimes from those close to us, those caring for us, and sometimes without them realising they're causing harm. This video aims to help you identify signs of abuse, what we can do to help, and where we can find more information. Abuse of older people can come in many forms, and so can the signs. It could be physical signs, such as unexplained injuries or bruising, poor hygiene, unexplained soreness or infections, or unexplained weight and health changes. It could be unexplained behaviour changes, such as detachment, sadness, fear and anxiety. And it may be recent changes to how an older person uses money changes to their financial stability or their financial independence. Or it could simply be seeing an older person not being treated with dignity and respect. You may also directly hear or see where a provider, carer, family member or even loved one are neglecting the rights of an older person. This could be emotional abuse. For example, being stopped from seeing friends or doing things they enjoy, denying them support or care services, or threatening to leave them isolated. It could be financial abuse, such as controlling how an older person spends their money, taking their money, selling their belongings without their consent, or pressuring them to sell their property or assets against their will. It may be neglect, such as denying an older person appropriate shelter, food, medical support, or general personal care. And you may also see or hear of physical abuse or sexual abuse which can be as subtle as someone getting too close, making someone feel frightened, unwanted sexual advances, or much worse. And sometimes this may even be from a loved one or carer. Sadly, all types of abuse, from subtle to more severe, often go unreported. We all have a responsibility to keep each other safe, especially those more vulnerable in our community. If you hear or notice something, or if this is happening to you, it's worth asking the question, could it be abuse of an older person? Asking the question isn't hard, and neither is getting advice or support. For free and independent advice, contact OPAN, the Older Persons Advocacy Network, on 1800 700 600 or visit their website at opan.com.au. Our national network of trained advocates are there to listen 
and help provide information and assistance free of charge, including who else you can contact, such as the Aged Care Quality and Safety Commission or the Elder Abuse Helpline 1800 Elder Help. It doesn't hurt to ask, and doing so may make a big difference to the life of someone suffering from abuse. Remember, older people receiving aged care services have the same rights as all Australians. And this has been further clarified by the Australian Government's recent changes to the Charter of Aged Care Rights. To see the rights and for more information on supporting older people, head to the OPAN website. This video is presented by OPAN, the Older Persons Advocacy Network, representing professional advocates across Australia. A topic such as the abuse of older people is a really difficult thing to capture and to be sensitive about, but also to make something that's kind of engaging. So I just want to acknowledge um, Travis Keneally from Create.Love, <laughs> who produced this. Thank you, Travis. Um, and uh, Julie McCrossan um, from, uh, well, Julie McCrossan from XABC, but we know Julie, Julie's voice is very distinctive and there's a beautiful tone to this. I spoke before about the aged care ecosystem and how we need everyone out there um, keeping their eyes open, being the eyes and ears, bringing people to us, being the conduits to OPAN. So I'd like to ask um, Megan Collison to come forward um, to tell us a little bit about the Community Visitor Scheme. Um, OPAN is really keen to work closely with CVS because while CVS is a social system and social support system, we think that there's a great partnership to be had and you can tell us more about it. Thank you, Thank Megan. You. Good afternoon, everyone. I might just move that. My name's Megan Collison. I manage the Community Visitor Scheme, or CVS for short, on behalf of Elder Rights Advocacy throughout regional Victoria. For those who may not be familiar with the program, it is a federal government initiative whereby organisations like Elder Rights Advocacy recruit and support volunteers to engage with older people who are socially isolated and would benefit from having a friendly visitor. The concept of the program is simple. It's connecting people with people. However, the benefits and outcomes of the program for the individual and the broader community are enormous. Socialisation is a huge issue and is now being considered a contributing factor to the decline in people's health. For an individual who may have multiple health issues and the difficulty to connect with others, the CVS program allows an opportunity to re-engage with society and to stay connected. It also allows our community members to feel valued and to give back in some way. Elder abuse is also of great concern in our community and also for government. So today's launch of the Elder Help app and video is a significant step in the conversation around elder abuse. A large part of my role in the CVS program is to support volunteers with any issues or concerns they may have regarding what they see and hear when visiting older people. They may themselves witness elder abuse. This can be confronting for our volunteers who may be unsure on where to go or who to speak to. So tools and resources like the Elder Help app and video provide information in a simple and succinct format, which is easy to understand. It clearly explains what elder abuse is and where to go if you suspect something. The app and video also provide an opportunity for people to stop and think about what they're seeing and hearing and hopefully ask the questions, is this okay or is this something I need to speak to someone about? I'm in a fortunate position working for Elder Rights Advocacy. As an OPAN member, we have a team of dedicated and skilled advocates who are there to support individuals around abuse concerns. So our volunteers are supported not only by our advocates, but by myself. But this is never enough. 
The Open Appen video will be welcomed additional resources to further educate and support our volunteers, as well as the broader community on issues of elder abuse, especially for those who are working within regional Victoria. The CVS program is something which I'm really passionate about. While simple in concept, the program has many additional layers of complexity, which dedicated staff and volunteers work on every day, with the ultimate goal of providing help and support to people in our community. It opens a door and lets the light in on what's happening. It gives a voice to those who may not have one, and it creates opportunities for change. We've all seen the terrible images of elder abuse in the media of late. Unfortunately, there are so many instances of abuse that occur on a daily basis which are not reported. I would like to finish by sharing with you a story of two CVS volunteers who have made a huge difference to the lives of many, including a situation around financial abuse. We have an image. <laughs> this is Chloe. So at the time this picture was taken, Chloe was 13 human years old or 96 dog years old. With her owner, Tess, Chloe had been a CVS volunteer for several years visiting in numerous aged care facilities. Chloe was the highlight of the day, not only for the particular person she was visiting, but many residents at the facility. As an elder herself, she thoroughly enjoyed sitting on her blanket in the common area and enjoyed even more all the additional treats and pats she received off everyone. Tess enjoyed chatting to the residents about Chloe and she had a real knack of ensuring everyone felt included and important. Residents would often share their stories and concerns on various topics to Tess, who was always there to listen and provide support, whilst Chloe was always close by offering reassurance. One of the residents Tess and Chloe were visiting began to disclose to Tess some concerns she had with her family, especially information around the fact that she was no longer able to access her own money. Tess listened to her concerns, then went back to her CVS coordinator to report what was going on. The CVS coordinator was then able to make contact with relevant agencies and arrange for the resident to have appropriate advocacy and support to address her concerns. This small intervention by the CVS volunteer and follow-up by the coordinator allowed the resident the opportunity to seek support and assistance and to resolve a serious issue regarding her finances. Instances like this unfortunately happen all too often. However, we're fortunate to have CVS volunteers and staff who take the time to listen and act when things don't seem okay. This example also demonstrates the importance of having volunteers in the community and highlights how a simple cuppa and chat can make a difference. The app and video launched today are welcomed additional resources that will further assist and educate our volunteers and the broader community to identify and to tackle elder abuse. I would like to acknowledge and thank the federal government for their continued support of the CVS program and strategies such as these today to respond to and to prevent elder abuse. And would also like to congratulate OPAN on the development of these resources. I look forward to promoting them within my volunteer networks and my community. Thank you. Thank you, Megan, and uh, thank you to Chloe and to Tess, and it shows that the simple connections in life are really important, uh, but that how we can all work together and across these programs to really connect with older people and to support them. So with no further ado, we might do a quick demonstration of the Elder Abuse app, Elder Help. Thank you, Travis. Introducing the OPAN Elder Help app. 
a free tool to help you easily access information and support for older people receiving aged care, including information around advocacy support. See how independent advocates can help support you, including the ability to click through to call or chat with an advocate. Aged Care Support Information about how to go about accessing aged care services for the first time, including contact information. Aged Care Rights Information about your rights, including the Charter of Aged Care Rights, and direct links to explainer videos and more information. Aged Care Issues information about what to do if issues arise while receiving aged care services and who you can contact for help or to make a complaint. And finally, information around elder abuse, including recognising the signs and where to go for help, with links to the Notice Something Explainer video and direct access to the Elder Abuse Helpline 1800 Elder Help. The OPAN Elder Help app for older people, their carers, volunteers and community organisations working with older people. Download it now for free from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. The Elder Help app proudly brought to you by OPAN, the Older Persons Advocacy Network, supporting older people, their voice and their rights. So. I want you all to get out your mobile phones while you're here and download the app, Elder Help, if you Google that or go onto the App Store and get that, that'll help you do, to, um, to download that. Please promote it to everyone. I'd like to now introduce Mary Ann Hunt, who's the chairperson of the Older Persons Advocacy Network, to close this out. Thank you, Mary Ann. Good afternoon, everyone, and it's a pleasure to be here and certainly a privilege to be able to um, make the concluding remarks for today's launch on Elder Help and the Notice Something video. Firstly, I would like to acknowledge um, our Minister, Minister Corbeck, and all the other people that are not in this room right now but are also online um, watching us and, and participating in this event today. Additionally, I would like to also acknowledge our older Australians who have put their trust in OPEN members to tell their story in order for our advocates to support them, to have their say on how they want to be supported and to have abuse stop. The recent released interim uh, Royal Commission report, A Tale of Neglect, is a record of how our aged care system is failing older Australians and our communities. Elder abuse does exist across all communities and is our responsibility, each and every one of us, every community, to call out elder abuse. We have heard today elder help and some, notice something is our resources to support older people and those supporting people to access help and support aged care related issues and the abuse of older people in our communities. Elder help can support anyone to access support when they notice something. And as we've had the um, video and also the app demonstrated today, it's, it's something that we can all use. So in closing, I invite everyone, and Craig did um, steal my thunder a little bit, however, I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> in closing, I invite everyone here today um, and online to make a pledge to take action now to create a safe community for older Australians. Download the help, Elder Help app now if you haven't already. Learn what you can do if you notice something. Share it, to our, share it with our friends and our family. Encourage our friends and our families to share Elder Help and Notice Something video. Use our networks personal and professional, to collaborate and talk about the issues that are really real in our community now. Let's bring our community awareness to this very real issue, elder abuse, and let's create a safer society for older Australians. Thank you very much.
I'd like to thank you all for coming along today. Uh, encourage you, all of you who are out there who have a connection to an older person, to actually um, get these up, get, support them, support them to have their voice and to keep that voice loud and strong. Thank you very much.